السلام عليكم ورحمة الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Before we jump into it I want to ask you guys a question Let me hear what you guys think If somebody did a wrong to you Do you have to forgive them? Oh man, we're all over the place. <laughs> we're going to have to take a poll. Right? It's like a WhatsApp poll. Right? Okay, who thinks that I should is too like subjective? Who thinks that Islam calls you to forgive that person? Okay, it's like 30%, 40%. Who thinks that you don't have to forgive them? Who's too nervous to get it wrong? <laughs> Nobody's checking. Okay, alhamdulillah. We know all the A students are at ICCP. You, <laughs> very risk averse, right? Alhamdulillah. We're going to come back to this question in just a moment. We completed the recitation from Surah Hud, and we started recitation from Surah Yusuf. I cannot tell you how happy I am to hear Surah Yusuf. I have Surah Yusuf playing all the time. I love this surah so much, my son's name is Yusuf. So it's, it's such a beautiful surah, and it's what some of the Mufassireen, they said, this is the original antidepressant. Because no matter how you're feeling in life, whatever experience you're going through, whatever hardship, you will find something in Surah Yusuf that you can relate to. Part of the human experience, it talks about relationships, it talks about communication, it talks about grief, it talks about sadness, it talks about pride, it talks about ego, you name it. Every high and low and in between that we go through in life, you find it within Surah Yusuf. Now specifically, there are four tests. Some would say three, but I'm going to make it four. Three that are apparent and one that is hidden. So let's go through the four. You guys are helping. Today you're doing work, okay? This is not a passive khata. So there are four tests. What's the first one that we just recited about? This is the easy one. What happens to him? He's put in slavery. And the way that he ends up in slavery is because his brothers of all people, the people who are supposed to protect him, what do they do? They throw him fi ghayab. This is not a regular well. This is not a bi'r. This is fi ghayabatul jub. Okay? This is a deep well, a deep ravine that nobody even uses. An abandoned well. They throw him into that hoping that somebody will pick him up or they're fine with whatever happens. That's number one. In that case, is Yusuf patient? He is. He is patient. Does he have any choice in being patient? When life sucks, you just be patient because what else are you going to do? So Yusuf salam, he's stuck in there, he's waiting. There is no choice whether to be patient or not because his first test is a patience, is a test of misfortune. And in the case of a misfortune, you don't have any option. You have to be patient. What's the second, page? What's the second test? Now we fast forward. He is in the house of Al-Aziz and he's tested again. Which type of test? This is a different one. That's right. Now he has a test of his, the strength of his conviction. That Zulaikha is calling him to haram. And this is the second test that he faced, but it's different. Now in this case, does he have a choice? He has a choice, but is it mandatory for him to be patient? It's still mandatory. So the first one, there was no choice, and it was mandatory. In the second one, there's a choice, but it's still mandatory. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made zina haram. And so Yusuf alayhi salam, he needed to be patient because there was no option of committing. This is harf imtina an imtina. So it was never the possibility that Yusuf alayhi salam was going to commit a haram action. But had Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not guided him, then he would have been susceptible to being tempted to that. But this is an impossibility. This is a counterfactual as we say. This is the second test. Then the third test that he faces, remember when they're all united together, his brothers are there, his father is there, he puts his parents on the, on the arsh, and now he has a choice. Remember the first two, the second one he had a choice, it wasn't mandatory. The third, third one, he has a choice, 
and it's not mandatory. Remember our first question? What was the question? Forgiveness. Now the third test is a test of the ego. Yusuf alayhi salam, he has a choice whether to forgive his brothers for what they did to him. And instead, what does he say? Rather than taking retribution, rather than reminding them of what they did, rather than asking them to make it up to him, he says, La tathriba alaykum al yawm. The same thing that the Prophet said on the day of the conquest of Mecca. Not only does he not hold it against them, he says, La tathriba. There is no blame against you today. And he prays for them that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive me and forgive you. So now we're keeping track. You didn't do Quran matrix. This is matri this is mathematical approach to the Quran, right? So here we have, uh, okay, yeah, we're going to do math today. So the third one, if we have an Excel spreadsheet, right? We have a choice and it's not mandatory, it's optional. Now, why am I making a point of these three points? Is the test getting easier or is it getting harder? It's getting harder. Now, some people would say, no, 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 brother of five. Being stuck in the well and almost dying, being put into slavery, that's a lot worse. <coughs> no. It's a lot harsher, but it's not harder. It is more difficult when you have a choice to take the upper path, to take the higher road, and not to take the low road. Because no matter what life throws at you, if you're deprived of food or shelter, the human being is resilient. You'll find a way to cope with it. These are the three that are apparent, and there's one that I told you that is hidden. This is a very, very hard one to find. Now when all is said and done, <clears throat> Everybody's looking at Yusuf alayhi salam. He's still the minister in Egypt, right? They came from Al Badu, and now here they are in the city. And what kind of life is Yusuf and his family enjoying? A life of ease and prosperity. And what does he say? Rabbi qada. They start to praise him. Remember, they prostrate him, and this is a prostration of respect, not a prostration of worship. Right? So they all prostrate towards him just as the dream said in the very beginning. And Yusuf alayhi salam has a new test that is the test of the ego. He says after they start to praise him and talk about how every, we all, you know, normally the story, how do the fairy tales end? And they all live happily ever after. But in the story of Yusuf alayhi salam, before we get to Lufan, first, there's one more chapter. That after everyone is praising him, he says, Rabbi qad aataytani min al mulk. He said, Oh my Lord, you have given me from your dominion whatever I have. I am faqir to you, Ya Allah. I am nothing. Everything that I have, you gave it to me. How many of us would go through what Yusuf alayhi salam went through and then say, Oh Allah, I thank you for everything that I have gone through, all that you have put me through. I find meaning and significance and wisdom in all of that. And then Yusuf alayhi salam, he says that, he said that, Rabbi, atarimin mu'am. Anta waliyi, jazakallah. Anta waliyi fi dunya wal akhirah. That you are my protector in this worldly life and akhirah. Tawafani muslimah. Make me depart this world in the state of Islam. And allow me to join the righteous people. The last test, brothers and sisters, is the test of prosperity and ease. Is the test of prosperity, is it easier or harder than the three tests that he had before? Harder. This one is very hard for, you know, our brain is like, no, no, no can compute we reject it initially we, we don't we don't accept that we're like error because we think no everything went well they lived happily ever after how could that be the hard test that is the hardest test that yusuf alayhi salam ever faced was for everything to go well because when everything goes well that's when you forget your lord 
That is when you attribute it to your own success and your own abilities. Right? That, oh Allah, that innama utituha ala ilm. I got it because of my knowledge, because of my experience, because of my expertise. That's why I was successful. So be careful about the test of prosperity. What is the way that we succeed in the test of prosperity? How are we patient in times of ease? What does that look like? What is the sabr is one side, and if we flip it, what do we find? Shuk. Gratitude is patience and ease. Wala in shakartum la azidannakum. That if you show gratitude, la azidannakum, I will surely increase you. Wala in kafartum. But if you deny and you reject my favor, inna adabi la shadid. Surely my retribution is severe. So, my dear brothers and sisters, I would venture to guess that most of us are in the fourth test. If that's the case, Alhamdulillah. If that's not the case and you're experiencing one of the other three tests, then still Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal. But I want you to be especially vigilant if you're in the fourth state. If you are experiencing afiyah, that you have, a, a show, you have shelter over your head, you have a roof, you have keys that open a car. It doesn't matter which car, but you have keys or you have an app that opens your car. Right, we gotta modify it nowadays. <laughs> you are blessed. You are in the top 1%, 5%, 10% of all of Allah's creation. You have been blessed if you have food yawm. If you have the food for today, and you don't have to worry about what you're going to eat today, then Alhamdulillah, then all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Speaking of great bounties, as you can see, the activity building is coming together. Uh, we have some good news to share, Alhamdulillah, in terms of the progress. We're moving forward with the sprinkler, inshallah. That was the thing that was holding us up, Alhamdulillah. Otherwise, the finishing has been going very well inside and outside. So hopefully in the next few weeks, We'll complete the sprinkler and that will allow us to open up the building insha'Allah. Today is the 12th night of Ramadan. That means that in two weeks, in 15 days, we'll be at the 27th night of Ramadan. And this is the most, Allahu Alam, Allah knows the best, but this is the most likely night. That is Laylatul Qadr. That is the night of power, which is khayrun min alfi shahr. That is better than a thousand months, meaning an entire lifetime. Um, as you know, uh, in December, alhamdulillah, we were very blessed that we had a qard hasana from some of our community members step forward and they funded the continuation of the activity building because of the shortfall for the upgrades to the HVAC system, to the upgrade to the utility systems, and because of the increases you know, post-COVID, right? You guys know about inflation, right? I'm not gonna tell you all about that. So costs have gone up. So because of that, we need to collect about 800,000. So I wanna encourage all of you to please support us. Come on the 27th night. That's gonna be in the Friday in two weeks, inshallah. Come with the intention of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through that night. We have a beautiful program with dua, with Qiyamul Layl, with Qari Anas, with the Khatm al-Qur'an, the very special dua that we do on the 27th night. But also please make the intention that you will donate generously. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our fasting and our prayers and our sadaqat. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, heal all of those who are sick. And in particular, a young man from the, grew up in this community, Faiz, who's having his third surgery tomorrow. And in particular, the mother of brother Yasin, who's having emergency surgery in Algeria. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala heal both of them and give them shifa and ajila. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala assist and help and protect our brothers and sisters in Gaza. Wa sallillahu wa sallam ala nabihina wa habibina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.